two things I want to do before we wrap up. Hopefully you're getting a bit of an idea um, what this PDF actually represents, because that's actually the hard part. The easy part is actually answering the problems. I'll tell you why. Because essentially when you're answering the problems, you're just applying integration. That's why I kept emphasizing that this probability now represents, um, this probability is now represented by a function rather than your usual one divided by how many outcomes there are. Because we don't, there's no way of knowing that in this case. So that means the problems that they'll frame are going to look more like calculus rather than probability. Here's an example. A function is defined um, on this interval, and we remember this interval here. Joel, what do the square brackets mean again? Um, it's stopped. Yeah, it's inclusive, right? No way, Joel. Okay. So now find the value for which this is a PDF. Remember your property here, the integral upon which it is defined has to be equal to one, right? So we've got this expression here. I'm going to integrate it. And I know it has to be equal to one, but on Matt, what domain does it have to be equal to one? Zero to five, that's right, yeah. Thank you. So zero to five, right? So we can actually use this to solve our problem. Now the A, this is where I would stress the A, probably a bit easier if you take that as a constant out. So I'm gonna do that first. You don't have to, just make it a little bit, make your life a little bit easier. And then you can apply this integration here, right? So you get x cubed on three, increase the power by one, divide by the new power. Um, anyone got next lines for me? Oh yeah, why don't I do that? Sorry, just seeing if you're paying attention. Yep, sub it in. So we got a outside of five cubed on three, minus zero cubed on three is equal to one. And remember, what are we trying to solve for? It said find the value for a which is a PDF. So the key thing here is not, not every function is a PDF. They have to sort of create and design these functions in a particular way so that these work out. We need to find a particular a that does match this criteria. Can you put this in your calculator for me? What do you get? 125a on three. Or you can just say 125 times A. <laughs> Controversy. <laughs> because then what's A equal to? Yeah, you just divide both sides by this expression here. So 3 on 125. Right? So you can see like these, these are the kinds of problems that we are framing now. It's not necessarily find the probability, but it's like using this definition, can you kind of work out what these are going to be, um, what values and what properties they're going to be here. Yeah. Good. How about the next one for me? What we look at now, year 12, is, like I said, this is just integration. So we're given a PDF, this function here, and we're given a domain which is defined, and we're given some um, values here. Now remember this notation. This is saying, what's the probability that um, your score, whatever we're doing with, is going to be less than or equal to 4? Remember, it's only defined upon a particular domain, right? Eva, what's the domain upon which this function is defined? Yeah, yeah. Right. And so if you think about the curve, what does this look like? This is going to be like some sort of kind of parabola, right? When you say what's the, um, oh, it should be going through the origin, actually. So when you're saying what's the probability that's going to be less than or equal to 4, because it's only defined from 2 to 5. It's 2 to 4. That's right. It's 2 to 4. No way. There you go. That's right. Mind blown. So let's set it up. We're saying that, okay, um, our integral is going to be, 3x squared on 117 from uh, 2 to 4, as Malin said. Do you, do you have that, by the way? Do you have one? Do you have that? I never forget the x. Do you have the integral of this, by the way? OK. Well, again, I'll just take the constant out, just to make it a bit easier. No, I didn't forget. I added an extra dx. Yeah, I add extra. Um, Kyle, what's my integral for this one? Oh Guys, got one more thing to go through before we go through this. Yeah. Good. So three on one one seven. X cubed on three. From two to four. I'm not going to write out the working for that. I'll just evaluate it. Someone can give it to me. 
Just part A. Uh, Manny, can you put this in your calculator for me? 56 and 117, so we're again. Did you get that, Maggie? Yeah, okay. Perfect. Part B. Now, so what, what, what's that? Is, that? is that roughly half? It's roughly half, I guess. Yeah. Now, part B, this is the thing where uh, Melian just asked the question, hey, is this meant to be inclusive or not? Remember how I said, though, at the beginning, what's the probability of a single outcome? Zero. Zero. So this is why, this is, again, something that I couldn't really wrap my head around. In actuality, whether or not you have this, or you have this, or you have this, or you have these, the probability is always the same. Because the probability of a single outcome is zero. And in fact, in fact, that's actually an identity or like a rule, right? So they say that the P of A, the values between A and B, is actually equal to the probability of A and B inclusive as well. No, and that's the thing that I couldn't understand. Although one single outcome has a probability of zero, right, all of them collectively on a range do have value. And the, the best way to think about that is through integration, right? Because if you integrate, for example, if you integrate something from four to four for some function, for this one or whatever, right, what are you going to get? You're going to get zero because you're going to get something minus the same thing. So hopefully you can see why one single outcome will always be zero. Right? right. So hopefully you can see why this is going to be zero. But um, when you ha approach it as a range, it will not be. Yeah? Um, Luan, what's my bounds here? Uh, four and three. Yeah, so three to four. Good. And look, thankfully, we already have the... Um, yeah, we already have the primitive here. So it's... 3 on 117, x cubed on 3 divided by 3 from 3 to 4. Okay. Wait, um, for the formula, mm -hmm. the one next to the a, the second day, is that what this Will that still equal to, or is that just plus? No, the formula, the formula, the formula. This one here? Yeah, yeah, so it's saying that if it's inclusive, it's the same as if it's exclusive. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Last one. Oh, what's the answer? What's the answer? What's it? Yeah, okay. So less probability. All right, last one, last one. The last thing that we're going to talk about is um, something called a uniform probability density function. So again, we looked at this in year 11 advanced, but it's been a while since then. So when a probability distribution is uniform, all of the outcomes actually have the same probability. So a very good example of that is, for example, a rolling a die, right? All of them, all the sides have a one in six chance of occurring. Now, what would that look like graphically? Well, graphically, what, would, what do you think it would look like if all the probabilities were the same? Oh. It should be a horizontal line, right? So, but we still have to remember our properties for a probability density function, right? The properties were that the area has to equal to one. So if it's defined on an interval of five to 15, what's the height gonna be? So if it's one, right, think about, okay, what's the area under this? What shape have we created? What's a... Uh, I, mean, I hope it's not a square, because it's a height of one. Uh, yeah. But then what's the area underneath that? It's, it's 10 now. That you but then you have, to, you have to define the values for which these are. If this whole length here is 10, right? Well, you need to do 10 multiplied by something that gives you 1. Well, that's just 1 and 10. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the PDF. What that means now is you can actually find these values really easily because you don't even need integration. And actually, this is what we did when we started looking at um, areas under curves. We looked at methods that don't even need integration, like you use trapeziums, you use rectangles, whatever, right? But here, this kind of question, if it's a uniform PDF, you can actually just use your areas of shapes, right? So uniform is when the probability is all the same.
the same probability. So what that means is, so if it's um, x greater than or equal to 8, that's this area here. And so this is really not to scale, but this distance is 7. So we just have 7 times 1 on 10, which is 7 on 10. And then part C, Angus, what would that be, part C? If I'm going from 8 to 11 now. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So it'd be the distance between 8 and 11. So it's 3 multiplied by the probability, the height, or length, whichever way, 3 on 10. Oh, well done, my pacing. So that's probability density functions. There's quite a lot there. But essentially, the takeaway is to solve the problems, we can just use our normal methods of integration and multiplying areas. And that represents the probability of the situation. Right?